How's it going everybody? Jordan here and in today's video I'm going to go over the legendary Dick SD set from the Atlantis DLC. This legendary set is incredibly powerful and somewhat invulnerable in the sense that it gives you a Isu enhanced ability at for 15 seconds every 60 seconds. Before we get into all the details though, as always, if you have any questions, you can join our Discord community in the description of this video or message me on there as well. All right, let's get right into it. So like I mentioned, the legendary Dick SD set gives you Isu enhanced ability for 15 seconds when hit with a 60 second cooldown which is incredibly fast and has a high turnaround. Now what does Isu Enhanced mean? Well Isu Enhanced is a combination of multiple Isu enhanced abilities from the DLC. The first is going to be the Blessing of Kronos, which is the enhanced poison ability. This gives you additional adrenaline while hit and makes you invulnerable. Same thing with the Ares Last Breath ability, which it combines with, which also makes you invulnerable. It even extends your spear attack range as well, or whatever weapon you're using. And also the Ares Madness ability, I believe. I can't confirm, I don't think it deals additional assassin damage all I know is that you get adrenaline and you're invulnerable for the 15 seconds now what makes this build potentially invulnerable is the fact that when the Isu enhanced abilities with this legendary set are on cooldown is I use abilities like Ares last breath and Ares badness which are also invulnerable abilities in between the times that the Isu enhanced ability is not active now if done correctly you are able to keep yourself basically invulnerable for up to two to three minutes which can last for any single fight easily or even for conquest battles as well and finally what makes this set really great it's actually a head engraving as well so it's very useful even for builds that aren't legendary or any other legendary builds you can simply engrave this legendary bonus onto any build you have and become isu enhanced for 15 seconds as well but the cooldown is only two minutes versus the 60 seconds with the legendary engraving which i think is well worth it because two minutes it sounds like a long time but honestly two minutes is a very low cooldown especially considering that for 15 seconds you're invulnerable with the build that you're using it on all right let's get into the build details here so our primary weapon is going to be the staff of hermes trismegistus now you should a hundred percent have this weapon if you have the Dick SD set because it's part of the Isu storyline in the game. Now this gives us warrior damage and chance to ignore half damage and then a legendary engraving of low chance to gain 30% health shield when hit and I engraved it with 50% crit damage. I chose this weapon because the headpiece of the Dick SD set gives us chance to ignore half damage here which tells me that I need to put chance to ignore half damage on another piece of gear. Now the only other piece of gear that you can engrave chance to ignore half damage on is your waist. Now I want more damage with this build because the one downside of this set is there is no elemental damage with it at least the way that I've made the build and the damage itself is a little low but that's okay because you're basically invulnerable the whole time so eventually you'll kill everyone. Now if I chose to engrave the 40% chance to ignore half damage here I wouldn't be able to have the 100% crit damage at full health which would make the build deal even less damage so that's why I chose to use the staff of Hermes Trismegistus so we get that tankiness between the spear and the head and I'm still able to engrave hundred percent crit damage at full health on the waist our secondary weapon is going to be the Isu forged warrior spear here this gives us warrior damage damage with spears and converts the warrior damage bonuses to all damage and the engraving of 50% crit damage now I will say that this this particular spear is optional and the reason it's optional is because you don't need to convert the warrior damage to all damage with this build you don't even really one shot people with assassinations even with this perk with this build on there so you can put any other spear here that you'd like I just chose to play with it this way especially if you didn't happen to choose this spear in the DLC when you made it if you really want more damage I would suggest putting a damage with spears here 
warrior that also has crit damage on it as well and then go ahead and engrave any other damage dealing perks that you'd like like armor penetration or the 30 percent damage while full health for our bow we're gonna go with assassin damage crit chance and warrior damage now this is again another optional piece here because we're not using elemental damage as long as you get some warrior damage and crit chance on here any other perk like overpowered attack damage or anything else will also be pretty good here now the main part about this is we want that crit chance and we want the reduces all cooldowns by 10% on warrior ability kill the reason I chose this this legendary perk is because I want the Ares Madness and Ares Last Breath ability to come back sooner. And how we do that is we use the Wrath of Ares ability, which creates a circle, slows everyone down inside of it, and then after 14 seconds, blows up and kills everyone inside. Now, every person that's killed inside that ability will reduce the cooldown of both of these abilities by 10%. So what that means is when you're not Isu enhanced and after you've used Ares Madness in Last Breath, you will be in a vulnerable spot technically because you won't be invulnerable anymore by either the abilities or the legendary set. But by using warrior abilities like overpowered attacks or the Ring of Chaos ability, you'll be able to reduce those cooldowns much quicker using this legendary perk. All right, let's move on to the head. So like we mentioned, we have warrior damage, chance to ignore half damage. We want that crit chance. Obviously, if you want damage in this game, you're gonna have to put crit chance here. We engrave crit chance while at full health. The gauntlets, we have warrior damage, damage with enhanced abilities, which makes our Isu enhanced set deal more damage while we're enhanced. And then we engrave 10% crit chance. On the chest, we have warrior damage and crit damage. Now, this is a bit of a backup or a redundant engraving. You could put more resistances here, but I chose to just show you that you could even have the invulnerability go even further by putting 20% health restored on death. So once you've gone through all the invulnerable things, if you happen to get hit and killed, you won't die every two minutes anyways. So it kind of guarantees that you'll be alive no matter what. On the waist, we have warrior damage, crit chance, and then like I mentioned before we're engraving the 100% crit damage while at full health for that additional crit damage. For the boots, we have warrior damage, more damage with enhanced abilities, and then we're engraving the 20% crit chance at full health to get that 100% crit chance at full health. All right, let's look at the abilities for this particular build. I'm running multiple ability wheels with this particular set. One's assassin focused and one's warrior focused. So like I mentioned, while you're fighting, the primary warrior abilities are going to be the Wrath of Ares for the cooldown reduction, the Ares Last Breath ability, which makes you invulnerable and gives you health back while you're fighting and then Ares Madness which also makes you invulnerable and deals assassin damage on hit. Now the one thing you need to keep in mind with these abilities is Ares Madness allows you to take damage but you won't die which impacts your ability to deal full health damage because once you turn Ares Madness on you can't turn other abilities on so it's important that when you turn Ares Madness on that you turn Ares Last breath on first and then Ares Madness that way you'll stay at full health and you'll be able to deal all the damage that Ares Madness is meant to do that way and the best part is is they last for the same amount of time so they work perfectly together and then the last melee one is the Kronos time shift it's just really fun to jump in the air and slam the ground underneath you especially in groups of enemies for the assassin side of things this is if you're going with the all damage perk you can do things like single rush assassinations with it hero strike and the enhanced chronos punishment assassination if you want to be sneakier with the build as well as additional slow time if you want that but again a lot of this is optional all right let's look at the stats for this build so what you're going to notice here is on the critical modifiers we have a hundred percent critical hit chance at full health like a lot of the builds do at level 99 we do have a pretty low crit damage in comparison to other builds that's kind of what i mentioned where you are dealing a little bit less damage but it's at the cost of making sure you'd never die and when you do have the abilities on you are dealing a lot more damage if we look at the defensive modifiers here we do have a hundred percent chance to ignore half damage and decent ranged and melee resistance bonuses thanks to masteries which makes us generally tanky but not extremely tanky 
And with using the 50% all damage perk for the warrior ability, we do get a pretty high assassin and hunter damage, but it's not the best, especially because we're not using elemental damage, but it's still enough that when you're using assassin abilities, they do one shot people as long as you're using the abilities. All right, let's look at the masteries for this build. Now it's important to note that you may not have as many ability points as I do, but just focus on the first primary ones and and then I'll mention additional ones if you happen to have the extra ability points. Now, if you want the 100% crit chance, you're going to have to put 20 points into crit chance on the hunter tree and 20 points into crit chance while at full health on the assassin tree. Between those two, you'll have a 100% crit chance at full health. And then after that, you're going to want to put some points into damage, like crit damage while at full health, damage while at full health, and on the hunter tree, crit damage. Additional damage you can get by putting into points onto damage with spears and also lastly for the 100% chance to ignore half damage you're gonna have to put 20 points into chance to ignore half damage after that everything else is optional what I decided to put my points into is a bit more tankiness with health armor and melee resistance as well as damage dealt restored as health for that sustain and that defense with the build and then I went ahead and put more points into adrenaline per crit so I get a lot more adrenaline so I can use those abilities so that's the Dick SD set. It's a lot of fun to play. Again, it doesn't deal all the damage, and my view on it isn't that it's the best set in the game, but I do think it came with the best engraving in the game. Now, I've been engraving the legendary perk on headpieces for a lot of builds. That Isu enhanced invulnerability that comes naturally just by being hit is a perfect combination with Blade of Yumminess builds. That's the biggest takeaway I'd say from this. Is that when you pair the Dickestis legendary engraving on the head and you combine it with the blade of yumminess every two minutes you're invulnerable and you're using abilities without having to use abilities and you're getting that 250 percent damage with the blade of yumminess so that's the biggest takeaway i have in terms of playing with the legendary set itself it's kind of fun it's a little bit of a quirky greek hero set in the sense that you're technically invulnerable i mean unless you just pause and sit there people can kill you but as long as you're actively using the abilities and timing them properly you will basically never die with this legendary set but you won't pack a huge punch either so it just depends on if that's the type of playstyle that you enjoy playing let me know in the comments if you really like this set i know the atlantis dlc videos have been quite high coming from me it's just they brought a bunch of new awesome legendary perks that i want to test around and play with but maybe we'll figure out a way to kind of start releasing more builds that don't utilize the DLC but we'll look at it and see how it goes. I had a lot of fun with this DLC. I think they did a really good job with adding unique and cool legendary engravings to the game and I've never been really one to push DLC onto viewers or anything but if you're looking for a whole new experience and you love the build aspect of Assassin's Creed Odyssey a lot of these new perks from that Atlantis DLC specifically are a lot of fun and they add a lot of neat and awesome damage to it thanks again for watching and again if you have any questions please feel free to join our discord community there's a lot of really cool people there who'd be willing to help you out including myself and if you want to contact me personally discord is the best way to get in touch with me as well so don't be afraid to send me a direct message on discord as well thanks again for watching everyone i appreciate all of you and i'll see you guys next time so proud of this world to be smart